Hello everyone. Okay, so in this video, we're going to put this together in a configuration where it becomes a 5.8 gigahertz, gigab 5.8 gigahertz signal tracker. So it's going to be an RSSI tracker. Now there is one online showing this, and it's a FR632. Those you can still get online. These are discontinued. Uh, the Quantums. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it in this because it's basically the same thing. The difference is on the inside layout is slightly different on here, but you're still going to be using the same pin on the FR632, which is going to be falling from the left, no, from the right, sorry. And that's what you're going to use on, on both of them as the, uh, as the RSSI output pins. Now, I've already built this into this once, and I came across a problem. Now the problem was, after I'd been using it for a little while, the micro itself, which was sat in here, let me just get those out of there, which was sat in here, uh, it died. Now, I don't know whether I'd been messing around with the parameters slightly, there are some parameters you've got to adjust, so I wouldn't have thought that that would do it. But what I thought was, because these two here are for the servos, now this is only going to be using the code is only set up for the pan, all right? Uh, but that's not too too bad a problem because, you know, depending on the antenna that you use, depending on the sort of beam area you're going to have, you, you just adjust and you fly accordingly. But what happened was on here, you see, what we got here is because we've got our 12 volts coming in, but this runs on 5 volts and so do our servos, we need a voltage regulator. We need to drop down the voltage from 12 to five volts and that's what this does now this is also what this is what i think the problem is is that this is connected out to the servos and it is also connected down to this so anything that may happen with the servo let's just say if it goes on one yeah i've been playing around with the software or this could possibly be another issue if the signal strength is too close to the receiver I'm wondering, but it's a servo, it's a motor as such, and this, I believe, could, maybe, I don't know, 100%, maybe have some kickback come in here and it's just spiking this. So I've decided that what I'm going to do this time around is this is my high voltage coming in, meaning from the battery pack 3S, 12 volt, uh, coming in, rather than have this deal, because this will only do maximum, with ventilation, 800 milliamps. Now imagine the servo uh, has gone into a bit of a jitter and it's pulling a bit of current. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, the weight of the antenna could be making it work a bit harder. Uh, and maybe that's caused this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to leave this here. Two choices. I'm going to either put another one of these in next to this. I'll insulate this by putting um, some double-sided sticky tape on the back. I did the same to that, makes it a bit gnarly on the back, but it just meant I could stick it in place. Uh, this one is that as well, even though it's a little bit movie on here, because this does get warm. Now, I was thinking, so, well, maybe it was just, uh, you know, just overloading it. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to put two of these in, so I'm going to have both the servo connectors, even though one's only working, but this is just for future uh, proofing, let's just pretend. Um, that then if there is an issue on the servo then it will only affect this one part of the power supply and will not travel down these leads at all uh, to at least uh, you know an area of least resistance and possibly be what popped this out I don't know but that's what happened and this is how I'm going to try and relieve it from happening again and we'll just have to just have to see what happens now, if we were to look at here, you can see there's one receiver side here, canned up nicely to prevent um, noise getting in, and another one exactly the same here. Uh, and as in the FR632, you just count in when you're looking at this this uh, this can, uh, this side, this uh, this aluminium shield, and you count in four, one, two, three, four, and there you go. That's the RSSI pin. 
yeah, just counting four. And because it's the same, it's exactly the same on the other side. That's what you gotta do for when you're connecting this part. Pin four, pin four, and then you have two, two wires coming off, like I've got here already. I'm gonna go away now and just tidy this up and put another power supply bit in. Oh, do you know, we're gonna do it. At the end of the day, I just cut the bits out, don't I? Okay, safety first. I'm gonna put me light down here so we can see this. And all we're gonna do is just touch a little tiny bit onto these, just to soften that up, just while it's on there, so I can easily come in and just pull it off. Pull it off, right? Now, I remember, if I remember correctly, I should say that this works, there's nothing wrong with this. Just clean those two pads off, in case there's any bits of wire. Now what we're gonna do is just take that off there, take that off there. Okay. We're gonna jump from here and here onto another power supply just there. 800 milliamp. When, when mine went, I was outside, going from my back room to outside Yeah, so we've got a voltage in, voltage out. Like I said, I'm gonna find a bit of double-sided sticky tape. If I can, if I can't, I'm just gonna put a bit of tape over that. And I will, because uh, we just wanna make sure that that's insulated, these test points, because they will be conductive and we don't want anything to short between them or, uh, you know, just sit over it and short anything on the back of our board. I don't think there is anything particularly on the back. Found a bit of tape, but I do. Doesn't have to be anything particularly that special. And as this is electrical tape by rights, I wouldn't have thought that this sticky on the back is conductive. I could have made that a bit neater, couldn't I? But no one, as long as it just does that job. There we go. It's going to insulate between there and there. Simple as as. And I could put that there, but I think just because that is quite happy to sit in that generalised area, uh, that pulls down through there. This can do is just going to leave that sat there and we're going to just jump. A couple of little wires don't need a lot. There we go, a couple of bits of wire. I do like the silicon stuff because it's so easy to one. Just pull the ends off. So just uh, tin the ends of these. Tin the end. Just want a little bit of flux in there, really. There we go. I'm still going to nip them down. A bit too big and blo oh, like that's got a right old blob on the end. Dove that off. There you go, that's still tinned. Again, a bit big. Gonna get these about half the size. <clears throat> Alright, now, where's our. Let's run away. There we go, so we want the. Uh, yeah, let's just put a little tiny bit of bib bibs on these. As I do it on the other side as well while we're at it. Now I've seen that there's been quite a few people struggling to find the function code uh, timer H. And so I've located it <coughs> and I'll share that. And if you're going to buy the OSD receiver, uh, consider this, consider the sensitivity. Now I believe on the FR632, the sensitivity is minus 92 dB M. And that's pretty good. That is pretty good. And it's, uh, you know, another 3 dB M, and that'll be quite a big boost. On this one, on the Quantum, they say it's better than minus 96 dB M. And the higher the minus number, the better. So this is the reason why I bought this particular one uh, when I could a little while ago. And then, I've, like I said, I've already done this before. But I've not really done a lot with this because my receiver, is, my, my, uh, in my receiver, I've got a, um, I've got a Hawkeye and uh, 
and I absolutely love that, no doubt about it, I do. You're probably going to wonder, why am I playing around with these wires? I'm just trying to see if there is another way. I'm just trying to get them there a bit neater. I just can't bother faffing now, so this is going to be it. And uh, it, I think, is 94. And, I, and I, that is a great receiver. That is a great receiver. I do like the Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah, a little bit awkward. I think that's just down to me. Um, I think that's down to me not having... Oh, there you go. That's not too bad. All right, so that's how that's basically going to go. And as soon as i found the double-sided sticky tape, I'm going to stick that in like that. So we know as well that that's antenna one, antenna two, because it's got them set here. So if you ever wondered which one was antenna one, it's facing you. This is antenna two. You've got two outputs for your video. So you could put one channel on one frequency and one on another and have two outputs. Let's say if you were out flying with a friend and uh, you're both on different frequencies, but you had one receiver between you, but you had two monitors, you could out to the monitor, out to another monitor, two different frequencies, two different antennas. And it's got it's quite a good little future few features on here like a spectrum analyzer and such but we're not going to go over that we'll, there's other videos out there that can show you that in the secret menu and which isn't such a secret it actually says it in the manual and so yeah what we're going to do now is we're going to just tie you this if we can by cutting down maybe a little bit on here and a little bit on here as we don't need them so long now cut that ground down to just before there i think okay there's one of that there that there that'll do Nice big. Just there. Okay. Remember, don't keep your soldering on 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 these boards near these components for too long at all, because they don't like it. They don't like them. So down on there. And just solder in nicely there. All right. So, so again, I reckon I might just there uh, because this. Is, Got his own little bit of tackiness just on here. I reckon I might just stick some more of that down on there. That's the old knackered one. So let's just push this back up here where this has got to go because these are basically got to fit in to wherever uh, this will allow it to go. And we want to make sure that we can get this out of the bottom of this for when we have to do any work with it. So that is, I think that's probably about where it's supposed to be. We need to take a peek at our Arduino board, because this is how it's gonna go. No, nope, I'm gonna put this in like this, like I say. Uh, that's gonna be sat down, uh, down the edge there. We're gonna use this one to power this, so on this side, where's my power? Here we go, ground and VCC. So we're going to take a, a little thin wire down here. Right, so let's take a look at one of these Arduinos. What we want is analog zero and analog one. We also want VCC, ground, and then we're going to need our outputs to control the servers. And we're going to be using servos 5 and 6. We don't have to adjust anything else here. The code's going to do that. The input's going to be A0 and A1 for the RSSI signals. Which way is it around? Well, we're going to do some experimenting just to make sure we do get those things the right way around. And we're going to say that antenna 1 is 0 and antenna 2 is 1. Yeah? And, and then our outputs are going to be according on there as well. So five, I'm going to presume, is going to be the lowest number. So that's going to be the, the pan. Yep, we're going to be using pan and tilt, but we're not going to code for the tilt yet. So we're just going to be hooking onto the five by right. But we'll find that out. We'll, we'll play with that and just make sure that that is correct. We'll I'll do the planes so here. You don't have to. All right, so that's the next part. Okay, guys. So this is the um, this is the Arduino software you want to get, or what version is there? 
uh, the latest version. And if you're using Windows, Windows 7 or newer, uh, click on that. Download the software, do the install, you know the procedures there. And we're going to also want to go to github.com and drive your simple RSSI tracker. It's there. Or we'll just type into Google this and the results will bring you to the same place. And you'll come on here and you'll go to where it says code because this is the actual code um, for, the, for the thing to work. Uh, and then just download the zip folder, okay? Once you've downloaded the zip folder, extract it, and then go into uh, copy the, the folder, and go into your My Documents, into your Arduino folder, and uh, just pop it in there. All right? Once you've got that in there, you could then go inside that folder and just click on the RSSI tracker Arduino file, you can see it, the Arduino file, because it will like it will uh, the icon will be like an Arduino icon. You can click on that and it'll open up in the folder. And uh, so let's just say you've clicked on that and it's opened it up in the folder. I'm gonna just open up my uh, Arduino now. So you've got that open and you can now see that you've got that particular uh, timer a piece of software in there sorry the um, simple rssi tracker I've got timer on the mind and now while you're there you're also going to need a bit of software that um, people have i've seen on some comments had trouble finding but if you look down to the bottom of the page you'll see that the timer h arduino library is here so you can just click on there and again, just download the code as a zip file. But this time, when you uh, download it as a zip file, don't open it up. Just leave it as a zip file. Go into your Arduino. Go into Sketch um, and include a library. Just move across it. Oh, include a library. Move across there and go to Add Zip Library. I don't know what that is when it does that. I hope this thing's still recording. And so we're going to want the downloads. And there's the timer master because we want to add that. And that's that. So that particular folder now will be in there. And inside there, even though it says timer master, when you open it up, you'll see inside there. I'll show you actually. Let's see if we got one open. Uh, you'll see one in the Timer Master folder. Um, if you open it, I'll just go back so you can see it again. Timer Master folder, which will be inside here. Don't worry that that's got Timer Master there again. It's just because I've done this a couple of times now. Um, and you can open that up and you'll see Timer H in there. And that's why then you'll be able to compile, uh, verify, and compile the um, and upload the sketch onto your Arduino. And once you've got it there, because it's all set out already, that's it. It just works, which makes that very, very simple, right? Right, so we'll move on to the next part. Because that's it. That is it. That is, that is it, finding the software. You are going to not need to change very much around, uh, but you are going to need to... Um, just tweak it slightly with this offsets and we'll go over that part uh, in a moment <laughs> 